Been another challenging spring for farmers all across Ohio. Cold, wet weather, and they're all waiting on Mother Nature to give them the green light to get into the field and get started for this year's planting season. But one Licking County Ohio Farm Bureau member for his plans in the field, well, I guess you could say they're up in the air. Kevin Carr has a drone that he's using to apply weed killer to his fields here in Licking County. I asked him what the method to his madness was and why this option is one that he considered here in 2022. So right here, we, we got some weeds that we got to get killed. Um, we're really concerned with the sweat spring we're having. And to get across the farms in the appropriate manner, we need to get these weeds killed. And obviously, Ty, you can tell it's really wet out here. We don't want to cause compaction. We don't want to cause rut, ruts. And our big sprayer can't get across here without causing those things. So. That's why we got the drone out here spraying today, and we've been really impressed with the abilities it had. We originally bought it just for fungicides, but after doing some test work with it, it, it does phenomenal with herbicides, and we haven't had any, any issues with off-target drift, and I've been really impressed with it so far. A weed that we've, we never heard of until about five years ago is burr cucumber, and it, it's a curse word to us now, and that is one of the other main reasons we bought this. And there are some of these fields you can't get into. A ground rig can really make a mess of corn late in season like this, where you can spray a whole field or you can patchwork and spray what you need to spray. And I mean, you follow your labels and we found most of these herbicides do a phenomenal job being applied through a drone. And unlike an aircraft, you can hit your areas of the field that you need to hit. And that has done a phenomenal job for us. I know technology's come a long way, but what are we still lacking in this area of agriculture that needs to be upgraded or things that need to be researched to make it more feasible for more farmers across the state? That's a great question. I think what we need to find is, is a way to scale it. Um, and what that looks like in the future, I'm not really sure. I, I don't really know if it's bigger. It might just be more out there, if that makes sense. How much area can you cover? Uh, we were doing about 20 acres an hour last time we were out. So, I mean, you go across eight, eight hours like that, you can get a lot done in a day. What do you need as far as, uh, I guess, licensing or, or training if you're a farmer looking to take this route? Uh, is it a lengthy process? We went through a company called Rantizio, so we'd be contractors for Rantizio, and they made the process very painless and very easily, where they could walk us through step by step uh, what uh, licenses we need. But, for example, you, you need your state license down at ODA, so you can apply your herbicides and so you can uh, fly a drone. You also need your uh, part 107, which is your drone license, and then a class two medical. And then we went out to a two day training course with Rantizio, so we could fly a drone like this and meet all the qualifications for the FAA. How close are we to having this more widely used across agriculture, do you think? You know, Ty, I, if you would ask me two years ago, would we ever be spraying with a drone, I would have laughed, yeah. Um, but I, I think it's a lot closer than we think it is.